Hey guys, it's Masquerade. Quick thing before we start the video. So I've been saying for the past three videos, where's the triggering content? Where's the triggering content? Well, here it is. So this is your last chance to turn back before we set play on the video. It'll be in the last, oh, five minutes. I just finished recording it and I'm still shaking pretty hard from it. And it's not just from what happens at the end. There's a lot of triggering scenarios and a lot of life advice I give. So I'll leave a couple of links down below that I think are going to help you guys out in case you're going through what the other girls are going through. Thank you very much for watching. And once again, this has very, very disturbing images and topics. So please don't watch the video if you're going through that. Thank you very much. And um, if you're not triggered by any of these, please enjoy. Hey guys, it's Masquerade. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm assuming we're almost done with the game, seeing as it's Sunday, as you can see on the screen here, and the festival is on Monday, where hopefully the shoe drops and it's suddenly revealed why this is in the dark horror section of Steam. Now, when we last left off, we asked Yuri to come by and help us with posters. And I chose Yuri, but I initially chose Sayuri because Sayuri is, um, <clears throat> she's worrying me a little bit. She's, um, she noticed I like Yuri, like, a lot. Is jealous or forlorn and left school early to, I assume, kill herself. It's been two days since then. I'm assuming the main character hasn't even talked to her. We'll find out. Uh, but I'm a little worried about where this is going. Like, worried and excited. Like, is the shoe finally going to drop. I've just, sin just been sitting here waiting for this shoe to drop. But, um... And I'm just assuming it's one particular ending that's messed up. Who knows if we'll get there. <clears throat> but let's find out. Let us begin. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help very much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an in intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Siori since she left early... since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Siori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? <clears throat> I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Oh, here we go. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her to not run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Siori? Hi, Mask! Oh, she's okay. I sit down in her room. Siori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Siori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how do you know that? Siori already left by the time we decided that... That last meeting. Oh, uh, we girls know these things. Monica told me. Oh, it's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Siori stands and stares at a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing after you left on Friday when something's wrong you can't hide it from me I know you too well so 
Siori smiles, shaking her head. It's no good, Mask. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings... If I didn't make that stupid mistake... Then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this... It's just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... <laughs> Siori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Mask. But... You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Siori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Mask? Yeah, depression. That's why you're so interested in up and down moods. I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the happiest ones, the super happiest ones that are happy for no reason are usually the depressed ones. They're very good at hiding it. So, it's one of those when something happens to them and comes out of the shock. Like, how did this happen? They were so happy. Everything was going well for them. Like, well, yeah, they're not going to show it. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days... I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Shit, is this the... Is this the disturbing content? Probably. I haven't watched 13 Reasons Why, but a lot of people were worried that the themes that are resonating in 13 Reasons Why might convince people to... Yeah, so I can easily see how this can... This is probably it. Well, I didn't expect a dating sin to come out with really, you know... Maybe I'll stop the blabbering and keep going. Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to not just think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I can do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Mask. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have wasted effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club? It feels like a spear goes through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> wow. I'm willing to bet if this was a lifetime thing, it's a chemical imbalance in the brain, not something that was situational. Uh, so yeah, I mean, therapy, medication, that's really the best things you can do. Um, a doctor would be able to properly diagnose it, not just, you know, things on the internet. Like, if you're sad for no reason, by all means, talk to people. I mean, sure, like Sayori, you don't want to burden everyone, but that's, that's the sickness talking. Get help, please, if you feel that way, get help. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting... That's what I'll do. No, Mask. There's nothing. Nothing at all. 
The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Siori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I grabbed Siori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, Mask? Siori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. I mean, you were kind of dismissing her in the beginning, like, ugh, she's so annoying because she's so happy all the time. I wonder if the protagonist is finally feeling guilty he feels that way. I guess we'll find out. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Mask. Siori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Siori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this, Mask. I... Siori bar barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all, but all I want for her to know is that I care. And sometimes that's really the best thing you can do. If you have it and need to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Siori puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Mask. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But... Your hugs are so warm. God, I'm tearing up. This is... <laughs> As someone with depression, these are the things I think all the time. Not that, though. And that's really scary, too. Siori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um... Uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Siri wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel- No, don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But, it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. No. <laughs> no. I'd, I'd stay all day, if not just a little longer. Not until I'm fully convinced she's not going to do anything. On the way home, I find myself feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over, too. I think Siori's right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a little moment of panic. Yuri? Ah! Uh, thank goodness! Hey! You're a little early. Oh, you're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that. For some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. And that's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. 
At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Straight to the bedroom? <laughs> it's a it's a house, right? A house, not a one-room apartment. Oh, well. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I'd be really embarrassed for everyone to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I'd have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would have been even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! I snatched Yuri's wrist when she was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. Why, you didn't want her to find your porn? She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if she's keeping track of them. So, um... Should we get started? Ah, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide the, an experience that will leave them want, wanting more. I think that's great! It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? Soka. That makes me feel... That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. Oh, bow shaka wow wow. I was gonna use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Uh, pretty familiar. I really don't know if that stuff is safe to use in a classroom, though. I mean, in an American classroom, that stuff would not fly at all. <laughs> not familiar at all. Ah, uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you use, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even permeate. You can even feel it permeate, permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a tiny ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. I love the smell of jasmine! Oh, this girl's reading me like a book! It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose Jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer, and your heart pounds more heavily. Do you think that will be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. <clears throat> Don't know if they're gonna make tea, but I did make some tea for my poor voice. I bought some jasmine green tea a while ago. It's one of my favorites, actually. So, uh, yeah, I love the smell of jasmine. I think it would be perfect for a poetry event. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. You won't be using the paper to fold or for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. A hundred? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Hey! I like that idea! It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative! I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. 
Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> I love your little oo-hoo-hoo-hoo -hoo chuckle. Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker mask. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Uh, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my, ban ha my bad handwriting. <clears throat> Yuri unravels a long, long strand of ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well... Hmm. Seeing Yuri in a sweater made me a little wondering. I'm not going to bring it up just yet in case I'm wrong, but, um... Because introverts do like to wear stuff that hides them. Like long sleeves and sweaters and, you know, turtleneck collars. But, um, there's... <clears throat> Other reasons why they wear those, and I'm not gonna say anything just in case I'm wrong. Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise, you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise! Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. I'm kind of into knives, too. There's nothing wrong with that. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and the feeling of danger, maybe? Oh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to begin to, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool-looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri caref carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. Proper way to hand someone a knife. If you're handing someone a knife, don't freaking shove the blade at them. Uh, give them the handle first. Sorry, another sip of tea. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? The internet. Or conventions. I see a lot of great swords and knives on sale at booths and conventions. Um, some of them are toys, some of them are real. They go for a lot of money, though. Curiousness of its sharpness. I feel, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Ask! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. I it's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Oh, just wash it and put a band-aid on it, you babies. Uh. She stares at it and notice noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh. That warning, Yuri puts her finger in my mouth and licks the wound. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Don't get your hands, don't get your germs all over my knife wound. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I'm guessing this is her weird habit. I figured. P please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri... That's the most embar... That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh... Sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise. But I guess she was tr trying to help, right, dude? If you thought that was hot, I'm gonna stop this game right now. Just... Oh my god. You're, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this the rest of the afternoon? I wouldn't. Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her in next finger. What is happening? 
Did you really just do that? Now we're even. <laughs> There's no recovery from this. There's no recovery from this at all. It was weird. This is not the how I met your mother story I want to tell. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Mask. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It's just a tiny cut. Look, it's already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each assume each other's respect respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. <sighs> disturbing content, ladies and gentlemen. Disturbing content. <laughs> I found that incredibly disturbing, actually. <clears throat> After we finish attaching the paper to ribbons, we lay them all... We lay... Return to factory setting. <clears throat> we lay them out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be effective as a door curtain. Looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Oh, a uh, Pinterest person, huh? Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint table. Tablets. <clears throat> Excuse me, burp. Oh, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water? Be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be diluted. Got it. Taking your advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to ca catch any, any paint that drips, good, and then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. <laughs> I knew it! 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 Guys, don't... Hurt yourselves, please don't hurt yourselves. Don't, don't ever, don't find an alternative. A couple of things I heard is to like get a marker and like draw on your wrist rather than cutting it, or you know, get ice cubes. You know, make some ice cubes, it takes like a few hours to freeze water and just put it to your skin, and the, the feeling should satisfy you. Just don't. I don't even know if that's safe. Just please, don't hurt yourselves. Please. I don't know how many people watch this. I, I care about you guys. I care about you guys a lot. I mean, the guys who watch, the guys who like, please don't do this. Please don't. You are important, and I don't want you guys to make you know, one stupid accident and end it all. Please don't. <laughs> your, your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or something? Uh, no, not at all. Like, the only way this could get any worse is if she actually did bring condoms or something. Like, is one of the things I bought from the store condoms? I, w I would actually prefer... <laughs> We get into that than what I think we're about to get into. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into cups. So, I thought we could do something simple that would look very nice. I like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. It's not I love mask. Oof. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After pulling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. 
This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself, For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I could spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading. It doesn't even matter if we talk too much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. That's so. Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner and grabs an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Ah! Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Uh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face, face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. You wore a sweater when we're going to be painting? Han, I really hope that's a sweater you don't mind washing a hundred times or throwing away. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back in front of her. Ooh, doki doki. Doki doki doki. <clears throat> Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. Feels nice, huh? It feels really nice. Heh, <laughs> figures. I don't want anyone rubbing my face, though. Glad you like it. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently. Half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Yeah, that's what I've been asking this entire chapter. Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Kiss, 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 kiss. No! <laughs> Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I'm feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. Maybe we should turn the oils off, then. It, it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I mean, you're in the guy's bedroom. Like, we have expectations for this to go somewhere, kids. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that tra just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue to follow Yuri's example. I should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here and then have you bring it in the morning? I could do the lettering in the classroom before the, the event starts. Is that okay? It's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. Uh, <laughs> you say that. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Oh, uh, no, no, it's not that. I'm just glad I managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I'm a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah. So you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we had extra time after finishing the work. Well, why don't you. Stay here! We could have ramen noodles! Watch some anime, play some video games. Make make it a day. Well... Yuri thinks to herself, I, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there'd be more time as well. It's probably my fault. 
Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Except you clearly forgot condoms and that's why we're not getting it on, on, on the bed right now. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems a little downcast. I understand why. It sounds like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this, this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out to the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. Kiss, 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 kiss. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go hang out somewhere. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Mask. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my head. Kiss, 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 I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? Kiss, kiss, kiss! But I don't even get the chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Huh? Ah! Hi, Mask. <laughs> oh, boy. Sayori? Just now, we weren't. Yes, you were. <laughs> it's okay, Mask. Just stop by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. Man, the music just stopped. Oof, here we go. I'm sorry, but I, I was already on my way to leave. Aw, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll, we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... That's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Damn it. I was gonna get my kiss. Oh, I can't be mad. Sayori may need something. Sayori waves goodbye after. Sayori... I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me feel really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down see Yuri's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Mask? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. It would be so much better if I could just disappear. No, 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 no. Do not say that. It's true. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Do I have to go slap a bitch? Sayori? What I said before is true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side until you don't feel pain anymore. But... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Mask. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Mask, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And... and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. SHIT! What? These are my choices? 
Oh, shit! Shit, 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 shit. You gotta be kidding me right now. Ugh. I mean, I love her as my best friend. Uh, but she knows I'm just gonna say that. Here's the thing, too. Here's the thing, based on experience. Depression makes you think the worst out of anything anyone says, no matter how sincere they are, no matter no matter how much they really do care. So she's gonna reject anything I say. And then there's Yuri to think about. Ugh, for the love of fuck. Ugh. Ugh, and what did Monica say to you? Did Monica say it was acceptable for you to kill yourself? Oh my shit, I'm gonna have to slap a bitch tomorrow. Ah. Oh. What the hell? There's no right answer here. Oh my god, there is no right answer. I mean, she is the friend. I'm, I'm not gonna... You know what? I'm not gonna lie to her. I don't know what this is gonna do. But I'm not gonna lie to her. I mean, it's either I tell the truth and it goes bad, or I lie to her and it goes bad. Ugh. I mean, I could see from the beginning that she was in love with me. Like, this is not the time to shoot her down, but this is also not the time to lie to her. So I think the better thing to do is to just tell the truth. You'll always be my dearest friend. Whatever you need most is for things... What do you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back the way they were. I... I see. Yeah, that's not what she wanted to hear. Siori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. <laughs> is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Yes, yes, sit down and write. Get these feelings out. Just don't act on them, please. Siori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I can get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just want it to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Mask. I trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Siori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. And she screams. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I mean, it's disturbing, but just get it out. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sarah so looks over her shoulder, flashes me one weak smile before turning off, turning around and running off. Nope, 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 I am not leaving you alone after that. I'm left there helplessly standing in front of my house. She lives right next door! Go! Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The most I could do is support Siori through her feelings and help her on the path, that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Siori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until these things are back to the way they were. Well, they're not going to go back to the way they were, as much as you guys try. It's, it's not going to happen. She needs... She needs a doctor, she needs a therapist, she needs someone she can talk to. But from what I know about Japanese society, having a mental illness and, it, and admitting it is incredibly shameful, so... There are people who just don't get that help. I'm gonna give it everything I got. Siori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do what it takes to put a smile on her face every day. You can start by going to her house right now. Shit, she's very dead. She's very dead. Shit. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expect this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. 
but Siri isn't answering her phone. I guess they're going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. No, you go to her house, you knock on the door, you try to, you know, make sure she's okay. You should have gone with her the second she ran off. Ugh. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should nearly be complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up, gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding her not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I could spend time with Siori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great, too. Hey, bitch. Not to slap you for convincing Siori to kill herself. You're the first one here! Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. That must be the one she prepared that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. The dummy. <laughs> She's oversleeping forever. You think that on days this important she try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's nearly not that simple for her. Go back to her house. Go knock on the door. Now. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Ugh. Why do I get stuck with these idiot protagonists? <laughs> you should take a little more responsibility for her, Mask. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Did Siri really tell her about it that quickly? How I basically turned her down? How I basically turned down her confession? It makes me really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm the new one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Yeah, because you're a fourth wall breaker, but oh well. Eh? Monica's being friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out these pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grab one of, one of the pamphlets lead, laid out on the blah, blah, blah. I grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flip through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flip to Siori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Shit, 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 shit. <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. You actually printed that, you bitch? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Mask? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? You approve this, you bitch! You approve this! You looked at this and said, and didn't even bother to say, I'm Sayori, is everything okay? Uh, I, I just... Oh my fucking god. I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself! Monica called that out after me. I don't like this girl anymore. I quickened my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Siori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her, or help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Is this a PSA? Is this a PSA of every single thing I've been saying this whole time? Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. Shit, she didn't want things to go back to the way they were. She wanted more. Shit, shit, shit. I reach Siori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Siori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. Can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house... Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? No, a very concerned friend who doesn't want a girl to kill herself. That's that's what they would do. 
In any case, it just feels right. Outside Siori's room, I knock on the door. Siori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't this kind of a breach of privacy? My heart's going. What's going to happen? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. <gasps> oh my god! What's going on? What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this could be real. See, you wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. What the fuck? I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Siori to be there for her, and you fucking weren't. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless because you weren't actually fucking listening to her? What did I do wrong? Fucking everything! Turning down her confession? That's people what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needs me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything could have done- Everything I could have done to prevent this. I just spent more time with her. Walked her to school, which you did. And gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just... Lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. <laughs> I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Stop. Oh my fucking god. What the hell? What the hell happened? Oh my god, I, I, um... I need to stop, guys. I need to stop. I'm... Oh my fucking god! Well, there it was! I waited for the shoe to drop and it happened. <coughs> so... Um... I'm completely speechless, and I'm just gonna nope the hell out of this. Thank you very much for watching, like, and subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you again real soon. Bye.